lost my heart and hope to die Welcome to my dark side Hello everybody, this is Bear and the Bears giving another video for the mobile game Zombie Flux Sleepless War. This is going to be about the kill event in the game, but first off, please make sure you like and subscribe, hit that bell notifications for future content if you like my content. Uh, I also will have a playlist of all my guides will be in the, the video description along with the Facebook and Discord links to the game. Check that out. And then we're going to get right into this. Go to the very top right. Go to the hot events. Go always go up to the calendar. Check what events are running. And the kill event is called Undead Titans, which is in the very top here. You click that. Hit go. And this will be the rewards and everything for the, this event. It's important to know when this kill event happens on your server, especially if you just first start playing this game. Uh, it looks like this will come out within the first two weeks of a new server. Uh, I looked at my VIP login times and it comes, it starts the first day, I think starts on the 12th day of your server. That's a two day event. It will end on the 14th day of your server. Every two weeks, this will come out. Now this, it looks like to me, it, it starts depending on the day of your server was started. On my server, it looks like it starts on Sundays, the beginning of Sunday, and ends on Monday night. It could be different for you on the server that you're on. It could start in the middle of the week. All depends, I think, on the time your server was made. So keep that in mind. Okay, we're going to talk about the, the points you need to, to win each chest. You go to the exclamation mark, and it's going to be higher the level tier level of the soldiers you attack. T1 soldiers are only going to be one point, T2, two points, T3, three points, and it's going to go all the way up. Uh, Awakened soldiers level six, which is going to be a while in the game for you to get to that. T6 is going to be nine points per kill. You're more likely to be a good target to a big spender the higher level your troops. In the beginning of the game, you're only going to get about probably T3 troops. I don't think people are going to really push too much in the very first stages of these uh, kill events. Now we're going to go over the first chest here. This is going to be resources, troop training, some healing speed ups, 8,000 points is going to be an epic hearts, epic combat manuals. 12,000 is going to be 100 serum, two epic hero fragments, and one gold coin. It's good to get those gold coins in all these events. Be able to get those to recruit from the Elite Recruitment. Get legendary heroes. And then the last rewards are going to be legendary heroic hearts and legendary combat manuals. Then you go to the rewards. You click the, the right above the last chest. It's going to be rewards. Click that and it's going to show you the ranks. Okay, it goes all the way number one to 100. Probably can get at least into the 50 to 100 on the on the servers. At least get the minimum rewards. Uh, the top three is really what's going to get get those legendary combat manuals to increase the rank of your legendary hero. You're probably not going to be able to get that unless you're a big spender. And then these are the ranks. It shows you I'm not even ranked, but it shows you you know who's all in, and that's helpful to see. Okay, loss is the number one. Alliance evidently you can tell just by look how many you know other players You know that could be a good gauge of what alliance you want to join or maybe find an alliance that's family to the top alliances we're in loss a the, the League of Shadows Academy as you can see our family alliance is one of the top Alliances in the and on the servers. That's a big help. It's a good idea of being able to gauge the different alliances by you know what players are doing well in the kill event now i'm going to go over some tips on how to attack uh in my opinion as a free player your probably best bet is to rally and join other people's rallies get one of your strongest players in your alliance have them do a rally on on a player's base and then join their rally the reason is because their two heroes is what's going to impact the boost of all troops in the rally. Your heroes aren't going to affect your troops in the, in the fight uh, except for the, the amount of troops that you can uh, bring into the into the battle. Higher level 
heroes is what's going to get you the more, more troops to send in other people's rallies. So it doesn't really even matter what heroes you use if you're joining other people's rallies. And the tier of your troops is important too. I would recommend upgrading all your tier 2 troops first before you start training tier 3. And that the reason is because you're going to be limited on the amount of uh, uh, hospital bed capacity you have in your base. But you don't want to keep making a whole bunch of troops and then you know you have your uh, troops start to die over hospital capacity. You want a really strong smaller army with your best level troops than having a larger army with all kinds of multiple tiers of troops that have a bunch of weak troops and you have a few high level troops. You want to get them all the same the highest tier level that you can get. If you can't find that anyone to really rally or let's say my instance I got maybe 4,000 points to get the last reward and I'm just trying to get all the basic rewards and I can't get any more rallies the kill events are most over you could then go around and scout on the map and look for some potential targets on your research go to research make sure in your war I'm still working on mine but I'm at HQ 13 my research building only at 10 make sure you upgrade that to 13 and then max out all of your war research for your level at 13 until it says you can't research until level 14. That's a great way of gauging who you can attack. If you attack players that are like level 12 bases, you know automatically that you're going to have higher re research uh, advantages over them. You're going to have better boost to your your troops than they will check out the the training levels i think at level 10 hq and then you have to have each building training building has to be level 10 you can then unlock t3 so if you're level 10 that means if you attack level 9 bases and lower they're going to only have tier 2 troops going to be an advantage same thing in regards to 15 guard camp for t4 if you only have t3 troops you don't want to be attacking bases that are are level 15 or above because most likely they're going to have t4 troops and they're, you're going to have a disadvantage the object of the kill event is to score points and not lose your troops in the process okay when you're attacking uh the attacking player loses gets dead troops automatically defending player will only get wounded troops until their hospital fills up and then after that point they'll, they'll start to lose troops a good rule of thumb is when you're out attacking players don't decimate them don't attack them 20 times okay some uh, games I play, they make a rule where you only attack a player, you know, three different times or something. Because the reason is they don't want people, you know, if you get 100,000 hospital capacity, you have 200,000 troops, they don't want people to go out and kill off people's troops after they get their hospitals filled. So you only really want to score points. You don't want to get pe players to want to quit the game. When scouting on the map, just click under your world. And you can zoom out. You can see the mini map on the top right. We're down towards the south uh, east of the map. What you could do is get to the edge of the map, which is about right here or so. And then you could zoom in and start looking for bases that might have some troops. Okay. Look for, okay, there's a level four base. Probably won't have too much. Try to find a base like eight, level eight, nine, and ten. And then hit scout them. And uh, I'm going to see if I can find one here. Here's a level 5. We're just going to scout him just for the purpose. We're going to scout him. doesn't cost anything to scout, which is nice. It's going to take almost two minutes to scout. D depend on the marches. I have three marches, so I could theoretically scout three different players at once while I'm trying to find a target. So we're going to hit scout. Now, this is important to understand this. This operation will lead you into an aggressive mode. You will not be able to open a war protection or perform territory random relocation. Do you want to continue? Continue. Go to the very top left. We're going to click on that little icon. Aggressive. Troop attack. This gives you a 5% increase to attack. Uh, this is a great tip if you want to attack certain mobs on the map. Go scout an, an act, inactive base to get you uh, flagged for PvP. And then you get that 5% attack boost. You know, good little tip. But war protection cannot be activated. You can't put up a shield. As you can see, this is like a 10-minute window. I can't shield right now. If someone attacks me, I'm in trouble. You want to keep that in mind whenever you scout and you activate this. Uh, you can only use uh, 
an, an advanced relocation. So what that means is, is say if somebody's march, I teleport over here, I'm attacking some people, and somebody comes over here and sends a march to me, I can't shield. The only option I have is to go click over somewhere way over here, somewhere safe, and click here and hit relocate. And I got three advanced re and hit relocate. That way, I'll move over here, and then their march won't hit me. And at that point, uh, maybe they won't be able to find me. If I can zoom out of the map, go to the very top, click on the very top, get up into the very top of the map, and hit relocate. And I'm all the way somewhere else in the other side of the map. I can wait for my 10 minutes to cool down, and then I can shield up at that time and, or report back to my hive my alliance and i'm safe or go attack someone else go somewhere else make sure you have relocation teleports available if you're going to go out and attack other pe other alliances hives and stuff okay we're going to go to the scout reports and i'm going to scout this one here at the level 10 it could have t3 troops keep that in mind uh this base here has a level eight headquarters so they only have t2 troops and it's good to look at the garrison troop in those. They got 4,000 troops, okay? And troop battle power is 65,000. So I'm gonna go up and go to click onto the location. I'm gonna hit attack. And as you can see right at the top, I got 244,000 battle power. So versus their 60,000 battle power, I'm definitely gonna overpower them. And I have stronger troops, you know, higher, higher tiers. So I'm gonna hit, I'm gonna select a hero. Ethan is good. And then I'm going to go ahead and use uh, Kibba because he does give the a boost. We're going to go to the heroes and I'm going to show you some, some stats here. Uh, he, he will give you an advantage uh, if you're using uh, commando units. And then if I use Kibba, he's going to give my guard troops uh, under attack 9%. Okay. And then when attacking base, lethality 9%. It's going to give an attack increase to my uh, regular attack damage for my troops. So I think uh, he's going to be for siege. If you look at Excel that leading troops to attack other commanders' bases. So I think those two, what I have right now, will be good enough. Notice how my batter power went up. 289 to 400 when it was just, let's put it to Evelyn. It's 302, so that's gone up. She's good to use. A lot of people use Ethan and Evelyn, but I'm gonna go ahead and use Kibba because he's got that uh, guard guard troop boost. So we're gonna hit dispatch. Okay, now we're gonna click onto my troops, and you can you can see it's gonna take like almost five minutes to get to to the base to attack. Now all this time I, I could be in danger of being attacked. So if I want to, if I had any extra troops, I could go over to my headquarters, hit reinforce. And hit tap join and then I don't have no soldiers but if I had any extra soldiers I could send them over there so that way where I'm out attacking if somebody would see that I'm attacking and, and then they know I'm you know flagged for PvP they could teleport right next to me and then attack me and I would lose all the extra troops I have Just understand that the purpose of attacking during a kill event is not to get resources but to get kill points okay if you want to get resources from other players you attack them outside of the kill events because if you do get attacked you know you're going to lose all those extra resources what i do is i keep my resources under my warehouse limit to go to resource uh, go to details as you can see right now i got a, a minimum of eight hundred thousand for food and wood and metal 160 i'm well under that limit Someone want to scout me right now as I'm as I'm flagged for PvP and I can't shield. They're going to say I have no resources. They're going to say I have no troops. Really no point to attack me. So we're going to go back to the event so we can show you the points uh, I'm at right now. Uh, the Undead Titans. I'm at currently 8,593 points. I need 12,000 more points. This could take me a while if I want to do single attacks. I'm going to hit him, and he's burning, so that's a good indication that I won. Okay, we're going to go to the war, go to look at the battle report. And as you can see, I got 93 dead, 92 seriously wounded. He has no dead. He only lost 2,100 troops out of 4,200 troops. It looks like as long as they're at a low capacity of troops, they're only going to lose about half of of their troops. I could, if I want to, I could attack him again to get the other 2100 troops. We're going to hit, look at his troop information, and he's got uh, 
tier two troops, a good amount versus his T1. So as you can see on his guards, I, I basically took half of his guards. So if I want to get the other 565 for the times two points, that'd give me probably another thousand kill event points. So that would be a good option. Same thing with him down here. The other one, uh, I would basically probably get maybe another 3,000 points total attacking him. And then if you can go look at the battle replay, that's always a good option to look at the battle replay to see how you did. You, see, I basically wiped him out. He had no chance. It was an inactive player, most likely. We're going to go back to the event, and I did getting stronger. We're going to go to Undead Titans. And I went from 18,000 to 22,000. I could probably get, if I'm lucky, 25,000 on another attack with him. That leaves me at 5,000 more points. I'm thinking maybe two more bases of me attacking. I'll probably get all the rewards. I just wanted to give you that the logic of thinking of how you should be attacked. You really don't want to be attacking unless you're really going be, gonna to be competitive. You're wanting to get higher rank. Uh, if I wanted to get to the ranks, if I wanted to get into the top 50 to 100, I could look at my rank. I'm not even a rank. I would have to keep attacking for who knows how long. If you're just wanting to get that 30,000, I need I know I need a couple more bases and I should be good to go. Anyway, this is Bear and a Bear. And I hope this video helped. But remember, we got to feed the bear. And I'll talk to you guys later.